Electric current or current is any transfer of charge from one point in space to another. So to derive an equation for current, imagine this thin wire. And let's try to zoom in a small portion of this wire. Let's assume that the wire has a cross-sectional area of A. And at this region, there are charges. So for a small time interval, delta T, there is amount of charge that passes through this wire. For a time interval delta T, there's a delta Q amount of charge that passes through this point. Current is defined as the amount of charge that passes a given point per unit time. So if we are considering infinitesimal amount of charge per infinitesimal amount of time, then our expression for current becomes dq over dt. We represent current with i, capital I, or small i. This is our definition of current. Now, when a bunch of charges move through a wire, they are usually represented by a drift velocity. So, if we try to sum up their individual velocity, their vector sum can be represented by one vector, and this is what we call the drift velocity. If I divide I, or the current, with the cross-sectional area of the wire, we have this what we call vector current density. And the direction of vector current density is the direction of current and again the direction of current is dictated by the direction of the drift velocity let's return to our conductor with cross-sectional area a now in this conductor there are a bunch of mobile charges Now, it turns out the vector current density is directly proportional to the electric field applied. So, in other words, when we apply a strong electric field in the conductor, the vector current density increases as well. And in physics, in order for this directly proportional symbol to become an equal sign, we have to multiply this expression with a constant of proportionality. And this constant of proportionality is what we call conductivity. And the reciprocal of conductivity is what we call resistivity. So we could actually rewrite this expression in terms of resistivity. This is our definition of resistivity. Notice that the higher the resistivity, the harder for the charges to move through a conductor. Also, based on experiments, resistivity has a dependence in temperature. Some resistivities of certain conductors varies in this manner. So if we have a resistivity of rho sub zero at temperature T sub zero, then its resistivity increases by one plus alpha times change in temperature. Now the constant here is what we call temperature coefficient of resistivity. Now notice that as you increase the temperature, the resistivity increases as well. And this is understandable because when you increase the temperature of a conductor, majority of its molecules vibrate and when it vibrates, it somewhat momentarily block some of the moving charges in one direction. This results to an increased resistivity of the material. So let's return to our conductor with cross-sectional area A and length L.
Now, the potential difference from this point to this point is V sub AB to differentiate it with potential. Now, if we apply electric field in this direction, then the positive mobile charges in this conductor moves as well in the direction of electric field. So obviously, the direction of vector current density J is similar to the applied electric field. Now from our derivation above, the magnitude of the vector current density is equal to 1 over rho times magnitude of electric field. Now if I plug the definition of vector current density, and rewrite electric field in terms of potential difference with reference to this figure, I'll end up with this. Now, if I try to rewrite this equation in terms of V equals to I, I'll end up with this. Now, if I replace this bunch of constants with a single variable r, then I'll now have an expression of v equals r i. And this tells us that the voltage is directly proportional to current and the constant of proportionality is represented by the variable r. And this constant of proportionality is what we call resistance. And we were able to derive a relationship between resistance and resistivity. And this equation above is commonly known as Ohm's law. But the real meaning of Ohm's law is that when you increase the voltage applied to a certain conductor, the current increases as well. So Ohm's law actually tells us the direct proportionality relationship between voltage and current. We just signify the constant of proportionality with the variable R or resistance. So again, Ohm's law tells us that the voltage is directly proportional to current. It doesn't matter if this relationship is linear. So again, this equation below just tells us a linear relationship between voltage and current. The SI unit of resistance is ohm represented by this symbol. Now if I rewrite this expression in terms of current, notice that if I apply a fixed voltage V on our conductor, if I increase the resistance of the conductor, then current decreases. Basically, resistance can regulate the current in a circuit. So again, if I increase the resistance of the conductor, then its current decreases. Also, looking at this expression, if I try to increase the area of the conductor, apparently the resistance decreases. But if I try to increase the length of the wire, the resistance increases as well. So this is consistent with the fact that as you increase the length of the conductor, it is harder for charge to move from point A to point B. However, when you increase the area of the conductor, uh, the charges will have more room to move around and pass through the conductor. That's why if you increase the cross-sectional area of the conductor, then you're also decreasing the resistance of the conductor. Now in electronics, the electronic component responsible for generating resistance in a circuit is what we call resistor. And the circuit diagram for resistor is represented by this symbol. And here are some resistors I purchased recently.
So as you observe, they are color coded. Resistors possess resistances that can be read based on its color code. The table on the left side summarizes the standard code for reading the resistance of a resistor. The first two bands that are nearest to the end represent the digits. In this example, green corresponds to 5 and red corresponds to 2. The third band represents the power of 10 multiplier. In our example, yellow corresponds to 10 raised to 4 or 10,000 ohms. Hence, the resistance of the resistor is 520 kilo ohms. Now, the fourth band represents the tolerance of the resistor. The gold band represents 5%. This means that the resistance of the resistor can fluctuate from its value by 5%. In other words, it can have a minimum resistance of 494 kilo ohms and a maximum resistance of 546 kilo ohms. Consider this circuit. In order for current to flow, there must be a device that maintains or pushes these charges. And in this case, it's the battery that causes this flow of current. Now, this device that pushes the charges from positive terminal to the negative terminal is what we call the electromotive force. But this is not a force, but rather a potential. And we symbolize electromotive force with this symbol, E. Now, when you buy a battery, for example, a 1.5 battery, and you try to measure it with a voltmeter and so on, sometimes you just measure 1.49 volts and so on. That's because oftentimes, if this is a battery, there's actually an internal resistance that lowers its potential difference. And usually, when we try to measure this battery from this point to this point, the potential difference that you measure using a voltmeter is actually less than the electromotive force. And we call this operating voltage as terminal voltage. Now, if this circuit has a current of I, then the terminal voltage is equal to the EMF minus the voltage drop due to the internal resistance R. So this is the concept of terminal voltage and electromotive force. In circuit diagrams, we represent a wire with zero resistance or negligible resistance as a straight line or curved line or a simple line and a resistor with a zigzag line. A source of electromotive force is represented by two parallel lines. The longer of the two parallel lines represent the positive terminal and the shorter one represents the negative terminal. A more realistic representation of EMF is the one with internal resistance like this. In circuit diagrams, voltmeter is simply represented by a circle with V and ammeter is represented by a circle with this line. Electricity bills is usually in the form of kilowatt per hour. This measure of consumption is actually an excellent basis in paying electricity because it takes into account the rate at which we consume electrical energy. To derive an expression that shows the rate at which energy is dissipated by a circuit element or the rate at which energy is supplied by a source, let's rewrite the definition of current. Let me rewrite this in terms of charge I will multiply both sides with potential difference because I want to have an expression that shows the potential energy required to transfer this amount of charge to another position. This expression here is actually the amount of energy needed to transfer this amount of charge into another position in the circuit. Now, if I multiply both sides with 1 over time or 1 over dt, Then I'll end up with this expression. And as we all know, the time rate of energy transfer is also known as power. So this is actually the power delivered by a source. Or, or extracted by a circuit element.
Now, if the circuit element is a resistor, then the potential difference is actually a potential drop. So if I plug this with our expression of power, then I'll end up with this expression. So this is actually the power consumed by the resistor. Now, similar to what we have done in capacitors in series connection and capacitors in parallel connection, we will also derive the equivalent resistance when resistors are connected in series and when resistors are connected in parallel. So, let's begin with resistors in series connection. Now, if this battery supplies a potential difference of V sub AB to this circuit. Let's label this resistor R sub 1 and the other one with R sub 2. Then R sub 1 will experience a potential drop of V sub 1 and another potential drop of V sub 2. By conservation of energy, the potential difference supplied by the battery is equal to the potential drop in R sub 1 and potential drop in R sub 2. However, since R sub 1 and R sub 2 are in series connection, in other words, only one type of current or one value of current passes through both resistors, then the current in resistor 1 and the current in resistor 2 are equal and we could just represent it with the current that passes through the entire circuit. Now, my goal here is to get the equivalent resistance of R sub 1 and R sub 2 in such a way they can be represented by one resistor. We called it the equivalent resistor connected to the battery. Now, apparently, if the battery supplies a potential of B sub AB, then only one current passes through the entire circuit, then by Ohm's law, V sub AB equals IR equivalent. And let's return to this equation. If I replace this expression in terms of resistance by using Ohm's law, I'll end up with IR equivalent equals V sub 1 is equal to IR sub 1 plus IR sub 2. But since all the current are equal, then will end up with this equivalent resistance. Now let's examine the equivalent resistance when resistors are connected in parallel connection. This time, let's calculate the equivalent resistance when the resistors are connected in parallel connection. So in parallel connection, when we have a current I coming from our EMF source, then this current is divided into two at this node. So the current is divided into I sub 1 and I sub 2. But when electric components are connected in parallel, they actually share or they experience the same value of potential difference coming from the EMF. So in other words, the potential drop at R sub 1 is equal to the potential drop at R sub 2 which is also equal to the potential difference supplied by the EMF. My goal is to calculate the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in such a way I could just replace the two resistors with one resistor and when current I passes through this equivalent resistance, then the relationship imposed by Ohm's law tells me that the potential difference is equal to current times the equivalent resistance. Now, going back to this circuit, since the current is divided into two, I sub 1 and I sub 2, then I'll begin with this expression and replace the entire expression in terms of resistance. So, I'll use the relationship coming from Ohm's law to do this. And this I sub 1 with V sub 1 over R sub 1 plus V sub 2 over R sub 2. And since V sub 1 is also equal to V sub AB and V sub 2 is equal to 
B sub AB, then I can replace this with B sub AB and then B sub AB. And dividing both sides with B sub AB, this becomes 1. And this is our expression for the equivalent resistance series connection. So to generalize, if you have a lot of resistors but they are all connected in parallel, then you can calculate its equivalent resistance by using this formula. You can also generalize this equation and this would be your expression for the equivalent resistance when your resistors are in series connection. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!